this is an apple. Clickbait, fake news, online fraud, manipulation, mystification, deep fakes. So, how did we end up here and why? The internet is wrong. A lot of people are saying now the internet is destroying democracies, say others. Ironically, this is also fake news. First, because there is nothing new. And secondly, the expression itself, virtual, is just wrong. Everything about the virtual universe is real as so welcome to reality. Clickbait is just a name for exaggerated headlines meant to sell more. Previously, when I was younger, this was called tabloid or yellow press. Now, is views and clicks paid by the global tech giants. The truth is now optional, traffic is crucial. Fake news is just a fancy, cool, trendy name for a lie. Just like the old gossip, apparently harmless titles in the tabloids. Manipulation has never been uh, a new thing. It was used since the 1980s, if you want, it's 1983 there, where KGB was blaming in, in India, for example, uh, the US of creating AIDS in, in a laboratory. Fake ads is the middle name of dishonest sellers. Now, they are not putting uh, stones in a fish to wait more. Now, they just went online and they are lying there, and they are selling there. It's more efficient. Internet fraud, nothing more than pocket thieves online. Mystification, come on. We always liked to put a little bit of, uh, you know, a beautiful story in something that is, uh, let's say, too boring. Okay, uh, I don't expect Mr. Washington to be able to cross the Delaware River just standing like this on a river that is very agitated. Mo maybe the, the other picture, the other painting is more accurate, but is not uh, famous at all. Why? Because he is not standing as a hero. He's a human. Should I mention something else or? I will just keep this slide. Father, please forgive me. Deep fakes. Okay, this is new. This is new apparently, but in fact, there is nothing new. We were always into this. We were always looking for a more beautiful, more heroic uh, present or story. We have uh, better tools now, that's all. What's new though? Here is what's new. The huge quantity of data we are producing. As we speak today, by the end of this day, we will produce 2.5 quantitillions bytes of data. Studies are saying that we are producing every year the quantity of data we weren't able to produce in the last thousands of years. And we are analyzing only a very small portion of this uh, data. This is disruption. And it's usually come from outside. You already know, I guess, that there are a lot of players that are disrupting industries. We are too busy in staying in Excel files and uh, 
taking care about today and we forget about tomorrow. But companies like Airbnb, Amazon, Uber, Netflix, you name it, they focus on future and they disrupt an industry that is already apparently solid. And our problem is that we have almost an organic reflex to reject innovation. We don't like new things. We don't like to get out of our comfort zones. And our immune system, as correctly Salim Ismail from Singularity University stated, is attacking innovation. Any organization that is trying to push innovation will have this effect. Don't. If you want a very classical example, the states maybe are the most solid uh, organisms and with the strongest anti-innovation immune system. Well, the change is very deep. This is how technology is impacting our lives. Not only, it's not only about politics, it's not only about, you name it, e-commerce. It's about the way we are having sex, it's about the way we fall in love, we are starting new families. Online dating just exploded. And talking about... Uh, the Spinner is a new online service. Talking about love. You know that now you can use technology to influence your significant one. It's not about politics only. It's not about manipulating for, I know, uh, foreign service, secret service uh, objectives or, or so on and so forth. No, you can use online to manipulate your significant one. Meet the spinner. Now meet the spinner. Now meet the spinner. And now, the spinner is a new online service that enables one to control articles presented to a pre-chosen specific individual on the websites he or she usually visits in order to subconsciously seed a message in their minds. That person, the target, is exposed to hundreds of items strategically placed as editorial content, repeating the same message over and over and over again, whether it is propose marriage, quit smoking, initiate sex, or stop riding motorcycles. How does it work? The basic package offers a set of 10 different articles presented to the target 180 times over a three month period. The articles along with their eye catching headlines are chosen by a group of psychologists in order to influence the target on a subconscious level. The spinner sends you an innocent looking link. The link is sent to the target via text message. When the target presses the link, a cookie connected to the link attaches itself to the target's phone. From this point, the target will be strategically bombarded with articles and media specified for him or her. The most requested tailor-made campaign is Settle Outside of Court, which has now been added as a preset campaign, and Get Back with Your Ex. If you're interested in a campaign tailor-made for your specific messages and goals, go to www.thespinner.net. Looks like a joke is not a joke. This is a new reality. Welcome. It is uh, funny or it is scary? Okay. I recently met a guy that is a digital marketing expert. He's using Google and Facebook to harass his ex-wife to obtain a better divorce deal. He's uh, publishing stories about her on YouTube, on Google, on Facebook. He's retargeting her friends. He's public shaming her using technology. I think this is pretty wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. Anyway, truth makes no exception. Truth is part of our life and technology is here to disrupt the truth also. This is how the numbers look like. Basically, this is how the digital advertising grew and the traditional old newspapers, useless newspapers are going down and dying. 
And because I'm a visionary, I started my internet companies exactly when the internet just goes up. But I was stupid enough not to say, not to see the fact that uh, there are disruptors out there. And now, when you're reading a quality newspaper, when you're reading a quality website, just remember, all the newspapers in the world are fighting for the remaining two tr 23 cents that are remaining on the table after Facebook and Google are eating the rest of the money. Okay? So, what's new though? Absolutely new. One thing that is absolutely new is the fact that now more than 5 billion people are connected. This is equal with the number of the total world population uh, when I was born. Google it, I will not say the year, but this is how big the change is. So it's like the whole world were connected when I was born. So soon enough, because everybody's investing in that, Amazon is launching satellites for this, Google is doing the same, also Facebook uh, is running some airplanes with Wi-Fi. Sounds very generous uh, for them, but in reality, it's just more data. What's new? We have in our pockets, we are in Apollo, one Apollo 11 computer that sent the man to the moon was times less powerful than our computers in our pockets. And this is an euphemism when I'm saying that. Because uh, this is the multiplier. One million times for a modest phone with four gigabytes memory. Just check your phone, not now. Check your phone and do the math and use this power for a greater, a better future. Or you can use it like this. <laughs> anyway, this is where we stand. A tremendous quantity of data. Everybody connected. Let's connect the world to make it a better place. Okay, but the downside of it is that any kind of information can run freely using the global internet network. Also, good people are connected, but also nuts are connected. And when enough crazy people are gathering and they are talking in their echo chambers, they start to believe that, hmm, we can launch a trend like this one. The Flutter Society, members all over the globe. It's funny, or... In short, the internet and the technology in haste by permanent connectivity is amplifying at a crazy speed both the good and the bad and evil in us as a species. And to make it even more complicated, looks like our ability to create stories, to create fiction, is the main quality that brings us here, right in this room, able to work with different clickers and look at nice slides. Because otherwise, if we were not able to create and believe in fiction, we were lost, most probably. Biologically speaking, our brains are wired to pessimism. It's called the pessimism bias, which urges us to pay more attention to bad news, to negative news. Why? Because a bad news in the old ages could cost your life. A good news could cost you maybe a, I don't know, you will lose a meal or something like that. 
That's why all the media outlets are exploiting this pessimistic bias. All the social media is exploiting this pessimistic bias. And uh, you know uh, what they say, if it bleeds, it leads. There is nothing as boring as the truth. Charles Bukowski stated, Mark Twain had um, an excuse. He was a fictional writer. Well, our Mark, I don't know what to say. Well, bad news and fake news, here is a match made in most probably, but it's a match. The internet is just an accelerator, an unparalleled amplifier of all that means being human. So stop blaming the internet companies. Stop blaming the internet. It's not him, it's us. Okay? Here is a great deal for the quality journalism. You take the, re the, the costs, we will take the revenues. How much you will wonder, maybe, uh, well, each hour, 15 million US dollars for Google, 6.3 million euros for Facebook. So by the end of this presentation, they will do something like 10.5 million US dollar in revenue. And we are losing our time here instead of producing money. By the end of the day, the whole advertising market of this country, Romania, the whole, not only the internet one, okay? Television, radio, outdoor, whatever, the whole volume of the advertising market in this beautiful country called Romania the amount is 55 million US dollars. By the end of the day, Google and Facebook combined, they will have this revenue. So, to make it even more fun, all the ads you are seeing online are not seen by any human before being published. They are seeing post factum. You can report. And maybe somebody will take care. Also, in the, in the newsroom area, let's say, the moral control vanished. There are no humans that are interfering with somebody that is trying to publish something on Facebook or publish something on YouTube, on, on uh, social media uh, in general. Now, what we are calling news feed, news feed, it's a sort of a strange blend between our neighbor's posts, our ex-girlfriend's photos, links to funny websites, and from time to time a legitimate piece of uh, news. It's like uh, you know, a pineapple pizza. You might like pineapple, you might like pizza, when they are combining there is a debate. Okay, what is a news? Well, I used to be a journalist before I, before I was forced to go into entrepreneurship and to make some money. What is a news? A news, it's a beautiful thing that is formed by three separate conditions. One, it's a fast-checked information, fact-checked information, at least from two or three independent sources. Secondly, is an information that is distributed by a media institution, a legal entity that can be accountable for the truth, the manipulation of the lie. And last but not least is an information that was filtered by an ethical code or at least by a newsroom formed with other people with different opinions. This is a news, a professional news. It's not in the newsfeed. It's here and there. For me, it's the same thing like, I don't know, 
creating uh, food is the same responsibility, or creating medicines, or polluting the air. We are talking a lot about that. But how about the pollution of our minds? Is not this equally important? I call for respect from the global giants, and the notion of respect is now purely theoretical. Why? Because the entire Google and Facebook ecosystem is based on traffic. And traffic doesn't necessarily mean from real news, from real information. We produce with every click, with every photo of our cats or dogs, with every share, with every like and comment, oil. It's uh, unrefined oil. They refine it and they are selling it. And we don't know the cost. We just know the revenues. Moreover, the monetizing instruments they developed, the big tech players developed, are designed in this respect. And what I'm saying is I'm saying that we need to look at the journalism again like being a respected media institution. We respect the lawmakers, we respect the justice. Why not think again and respect what journalism is? is. It's a profession. News is. It's a professionally done piece of content. Traffic, data, money. Data is the new oil, uh, they say. Well, that's not a metaphor anymore. If we are looking at the stock exchange in the United States and the way that the oil and gas companies went down and the data companies went up, you can uh, see with your eyes what I'm talking about. Moreover, to make it even more fun, Google and Facebook are also producing uh, instruments for this traffic to be monetized. It's called I don't know, Facebook Audience Network or Google Display Network. So they create tools for anybody to be able to run ads. So indirectly, again, business. Also, the serious brands are asking for the serious publishers to eliminate their ads if the content is not right for them. It's called brand safe. But you know how it's like? Sometimes brand safe means I don't want my ad to be shown uh, in a political story. I don't want my ad to be shown when uh, is an investigation. I just want a safe environment. And there is a safe environment. Um, for example, Instagram doesn't necessarily have to be true. Everything is cute. Even the influencers some are some, sometimes fake. They are computer generated, but is brand safe. It is brand safe, but it is this ethical. I don't know what to say. So now there are more and more voices asking for, ch for a change. And uh, funny enough, a comedian did a very powerful statement the other day. Let's watch it for one minute. Democracy, which depends on shared truths, is in retreat. And autocracy, which depends on shared lies, is on the march. All this hate and violence is being facilitated by a handful of internet companies that amount to the greatest propaganda machine in history. The algorithms these platforms depend on deliberately amplify the type of content that keeps users engaged, stories that appeal to our baser instincts and that trigger outrage and fear. 
As one headline put it, just think what Goebbels could have done with Facebook. Zuckerberg tried to portray this whole issue as choices around free expression. That is ludicrous. This is not about limiting anyone's free speech. This is about giving people, including some of the most reprehensible people on earth, the biggest platform in history to reach a third of the planet. Freedom of speech is not freedom of reach. Sadly, there will always be racists, misogynists, anti-Semites, and child abusers. But I think we can all agree that we should not be giving bigots and pedophiles a free platform to amplify their views and target their victims. If you pay them, Facebook will run any political ad you want, even if it's a lie. And they'll even help you micro-target those lies to their users for maximum effect. Under this twisted logic, if Facebook were around in the 1930s, it would have allowed Hitler to post 30 second ads on his solution to the Jewish problem. So here's a good standard and practice. Facebook, start fact-checking political ads before you run them. Stop micro-targeted lies immediately. And when the ads are false, give back the money and don't publish them. Okay, so before the voices of those who are asking the politicians to interfere, which I think is bad, which I think is bad, I think the industry, the internet industry in general, because we are all part of the problem, even us, we are consuming the products, so we are the product. Us, as digital media agencies, we are using those platforms because the clients are asking for that. So we are all part of the problem. I think before that, there are a few simple solutions to solve it. And I will have the arrogance to mention a few in the two minutes I still have on the counter. First, did you ever heard about a fake bank account? No, why? Because you can't open a bank account without papers. You can't open a, a bank account going online and putting a nickname there and obtaining an, an IBAN uh, code and then just, I don't know, do financial transactions. So how about not opening again anymore a Gmail account, a YouTube account, a Facebook account if you don't have papers to prove your own identity and to take responsibility for what you are publishing it uh, there. I think it's simple. Okay, it's a little bit cost not effective, but life is unfair. How about separating news feed from friends feed? This is happening now in the States with a very limited number of publishers, but you know what? Not in the States is the problem. The problem is here in the countries where we didn't have the time to build the New York Times. We didn't have the time to, bring, to, to, to build the Washington Post, and we don't have a Bezos who invested in, in, a, in, a, in a paper like Washington Post. So we need those measures right away all over the world. How about some media education? How about learning our children? how to report the fake news, and how about somebody responding to this fake news and just unpublish it. For the brands, for advertisers, how about bring back some ethics in what you're investing in? Because if you're keeping investing in ads that are run, for example, on, I don't know, fake news websites that are saying, for example, that we don't need any other corporations in Romania. We just need to take over control. In the end of the day, your ads will contribute for you to being kicking, kicked out of the market, for example. So think a little bit further. A month ago, Mark Zuckerberg delivered a speech at Georgetown showing his concern about not the disruption of truth, but the erosion of truth. Just as usual, his defense 
is the illusion of censorship. But nobody is asking Google, Facebook, Amazon, whatever, to apply censorship. What we are asking is to clean the air, to create a healthier food for our thoughts. This is everything we are asking. So my last advice, just cut the bullshit. You can do it. And now, uh, maybe surprising uh, disclaimer, despite everything I said, I have a huge respect to Google, to Facebook, to Amazon, to Apple, also to Tencent, to Yandex. I consider all of them as being the most innovative companies that humans ever created. I just have a kind request, or maybe a hope. Please, guys, just be disruptive for a better world. And remember, an apple is an apple, a banana is a banana, and uh, there is nothing to debate about it. This is an apple. Some people might try to tell you that it's a banana. They might scream banana, banana, banana over and over and over again. They might put banana in all caps. You might even start to believe that this is a banana. But it's not. This is an apple. So thank you and remember the truth is a beautiful thing even when it hurts. Thank you. Now, uh, thank you, Dragos, very much. It was. Uh, it this is fake news. See, this is never happened in my life. Oh, I don't know how to put this back now. So I'll just use this very tiny microphone to thank Dragos again and to invite him for a very short series of questions. Where the truth is, we're running out of time. In general, we're running out of time. So, so. If you have, we have time for two questions and then Dragos will most likely be here for uh, one, two hours. So if there's any questions, raise your hands now and I will come with my tiny microphone. Or you can ask me on Facebook, for example. Or LinkedIn. I think it was all clear, man. All clear? I have a question. No, 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 I have a question. Oh, shit. okay. <clears throat> I, I saw the solution, you know, no bullshit, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Um, but what are the solutions for the people that don't know this is a problem? How do you help the people that don't understand that they are targeted, they're manipulated, et cetera? Yeah, I think the only uh, solution we are having right now is to talk about it openly in a constructive uh, way, a constructive manner. I have uh, constant uh, talks with uh, um, guys from Google, from Facebook on it. I'm also approaching this uh, topic on, uh, on our festival because it's a tech festival, but we are trying to be honest and we are treating uh, the good and the bad uh, side of tech. And what I think, uh, in order to end uh, this session in an optimistic um, uh, manner, you know, I think we are in an early stage, like in a we are teenagers of, of the digital and tech and the internet industry now. We are in our uh, early uh, teenage years and we are doing a lot of crazy stuff. We are doing mistakes. So in the beginning when the car was invented, there were no rules of how to drive a car. But some people died eventually, unfortunately. They were victims. And then we invented the rules how to drive a car. I hope before is maybe a little bit late to um, 
talk about uh, those matters, to understand those matters. Everybody who's part of this problem, because I repeat, I'm not a hypocrite, I'm owning a digital marketing agency, so now I'm speaking about that and my colleagues are running ads on Facebook and Google maybe. Um, before it's too late, we need to openly discuss and educate people and uh, also make aware about this is a problem and to find solutions together, even in events like this, to um, um, solve it. That's why, as much as I was uh, able to, I was also uh, listed some solutions. Yeah. Maybe they are stupid, but let's list 100 stupid ideas and extract one that can help us. We will ask you in the feedback mm. form. We don't have a feedback form. <laughs> we will ask, we will <laughs> send a personalized email, automated, to all of you to ask for one solution to the fake news dilemma. Thank you very much, Aragorn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.